Hello, welcome to this overview of Atlas TI 8 for Mac. I'm Ricardo Contreras and I have created a video that gives an overview of the main features of Atlas TI 8 for Mac. Before I start with the video, let me uh, show you a few slides that I think you will find interesting. First of all, the content of the overview. I will be taking you through the main procedures involved in a typical analysis project with Atlas TI in about 60 minutes. Uh, I will start with all of the features related to setting up an analysis project, uh, segmentation and coding, uh, creating outputs, uh, tools for data exploration, as well as tools for data analysis. Now, what is Atlas TI? Atlas TI is a software uh, that facilitates the process of qualitatively analyzing research data. You can work with files in multiple file formats, uh, text file formats, PDF, graphic, video, and audio. You can also integrate with geographic mapping applications so that you can bring into the analysis project the geographic dimension. Atlas TI allows for importing data from Twitter, Evernote, that is coming soon, reference management software, such as Mendeley, Sotero, or EndNote, and Excel. And Excel has to do with a survey data analysis. You can also work with Atlas TI Mac in teams so that you have different people involved in the coding process. and you may also calculate intercoder reliability. The family of Atlas TI products includes Atlas TI Desktop for Windows and Mac, Atlas TI Mobile for Android and iPad, and Atlas TI Cloud. In terms of licensing, all of the licenses that we offer are fully functional. We do not make distinctions in terms of functionality. We have the free trial that you can use to learn the program that is a perpetual license, but it limits the project size to 10 sources of information, 10 documents. We also have student licenses, six months and two years. Uh, those are heavily discounted. Licenses for single users, uh, those are perpetual. For teams of users, there you have the choice of a perpetual license or an annual lease and licenses for the entire university campuses, and those are leases. In terms of learning, we offer free demo webinars, as well as free on-demand group demo webinars, that is, you request them according to your needs. We also offer premium training, those are courses that we teach online, face-to-face -face and on-site, a collection of video tutorials, manuals, a research blog with case studies and best practices on Atlas TI, and you can find more information on that on the website under Learning. In terms of support, all of the licenses that we have qualify to the same kind of support services. You can call us at numbers that we have in different countries for sales and functionality questions, and you can email us for all kinds of inquiries. For more information on that, you can, you can access our website under support. And now let's go with Atlas TI 8 for Mac. After you open Atlas TI, you will get to this welcome screen. On the right side, you will see the list of projects you have already created and on the left side, the options to create a new project and another one to import an existing project. I am going to click where it says create a new Atlas TI project, TI webinar, and I will click on create. And now we are inside of the project. The next thing that you do is you will add the sources of information that you want to analyze. To do that, you go to the plus sign on top, or you go to document above, select 
there the option import documents uh, let me go to the plus sign import documents I select the documents I want to import now the documents are inside of Atlas TI now the the sources of information those files when imported they become the documents of the project so that is why we talk about documents uh, in the left side you see a, a, what we call a left side panel that is the navigator uh, that is where you will see the list of documents click on the triangle next to documents and there they are double click on one and the document will be opened another one another one another one a photograph audio file so the first one let me go over them again it's a it's a it's a video the next one is a word document uh, then we have a pdf uh, a photograph and a uh, an audio document so we can work with all of them all right so that is uh, how you access your documents and now they are in what we call the main workspace that is where you're going to be working with them the next thing that you do uh, early in the process even before you start segmenting and coding uh, you are going to uh, organize those documents and and to do that you have to access what we call the document manager uh, click on command one command one that opens the document manager that is where you see each one of the project documents you click on one and you will be able to see below the preview of it and on the right side a space where you can rename it the name is given uh, at the time that you create the file outside of atlas ti so that is the name uh, that, that the document has but i can uh, rename it by adding a word or, or something like that uh, in the space below there says says comment that is where you are going to say a few words describing uh, this this particular document uh, video uh, recorded in a health center in Rio de Janeiro etc etc you can say the date it was recorded and something about the quality of the video and so on basically here is where you're going to write anything descriptive some not normally short descriptive about the nature of each one of these documents the next one uh, it's um, it's an interview conducted on june the 30th 2012 and so on and the third one i will write down interview conducted uh, in uh, guatemala city on such and such a date with this person and you can give a description of, of that but brief brief this is not uh is this is not where you are going to analyze the content uh, of the document now uh, if you're working on a thesis or in, or in a dissertation, I always suggest to you that you include a table as an appendix, a table with the names of the documents and their descriptions. You select the documents you have commented and you know which ones they are because they have a little yellow stamp on the do document icon on the left side of their names. And there you're going to see above on the right a rectangle with an arrow pointing up that is the universal uh, icon uh, for creating outputs you can create qualitative outputs as a table that is export a spreadsheet or uh, in a narrative form and that is export as report in this case the table or spreadsheet works the best click there make sure that opening microsoft except uh, excel is selected save and here you have a table you would have to edit it and uh, remove the columns that you don't really need you can copy this and paste it into word and you edit the table and that can be an appendix that you can include in your reports okay the name of the document with its description early 
on, even before you start reading, segmenting, and coding, you have to take a look at your documents and start asking yourselves, how can you group them according to shared characteristics? It can be demographic or non-demographic characteristics. Uh, so for example, in this case, all of the ones I have just selected, drag and drop into the left side panel inside of the document manager, uh, they are all uh, documents corresponding to the site Brazil. And I have these two that I'm selecting now that correspond to the site uh, or to the location, really. Location Urban. Okay, so there you have it. Now, why do you do this? Because eventually you will want to ask Atlas TI, what did people say in regards to topic X, Y, or Z, but only those from Brazil? only those from Guatemala, only those from Brazil are in urban locations. Okay? All right. Let's now take a look at the process of segmentation and coding. All right. So you open your document and you start working with it. Now, what do you do? Well, you read it, first of all, right? So having software or using software in analysis does not mean that you're not going to read the document. Um, just the opposite. You have to read it very carefully. Uh, and as you read, you select. You select segments that call your attention, uh, guided by your research questions. You can select how much text you want, a, a single character. Uh, more than that, uh, it's, it's up to you. Uh, I selected the paragraph, and in this paragraph, uh, in this article, um, uh, this article is, is, is introducing the topic of community health agents in Brazil. So I say, well, I want to attach to this a code, and the code will be called Community Health Agents Introduction. I go to Add Coding above, and I write down the name, the name of the code. What happens as I did that? On the right side, what we call the margin area, you now see a bar, and then next to it, you see the code that I created. Uh, what is a code? Paraphrasing John S. Aldana, a code is a word or short phrase that symbolically assigns a summative meaning to a portion of language-based or visual data. So it's an attempt to synthesize the meaning behind what is being said in a given segment. In the context of Atlas TI, the code is an attempt to, synth uh, to synthesize the meaning behind a quotation. The quotation is represented by this bar uh, in the margin area. The quotation is what the person said. I like to say that the quotation is the voice of the participant. You can also think of it as the raw data. It is not what you think that means. It is simply what was said in that segment. What do you do? You will go to the right side, that is the inspector, where you see the name of the quotation that is given by the software automatically using the first few uh, words of it. Uh, you can rename it in a, in a, with a name that is descriptive. Community Health Agent is title of Lay Healthcare Worker in Brazil. Very descriptive, a, 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 a short way of naming uh, uh, that quotation, a name that, that describes what that quotation is about. Now, you are going to go to the space below where it says comment, that is the quotation comment, and that is the space where you are going to reflect upon the content of that quotation. As you read that, what comes to your mind? Is there any reflection that you would like to ma make? Is there any insight that comes to your mind? Well, whatever you would like to say, say it. Write that down immediately. And that is what you do in the quotation comment space. For example, uh, interesting that the program was created uh, together or in conjunction with the country's unified health system. Let's investigate the policy implications 
of that. So you can think of it as a sticky note that you attach to the quotation. It's really an opportunity for you to think deeper about what the person is saying. So it plays a very important role. Uh, and something else that you're going to do is you're going to click on the, on the code and then uh, on the right side, you see the inspector of the code. Uh, there you see the name of it, the space or the place where you can select a color. And below the comment space. So this is the comment of the code, which is the space where you are going to define the meaning of that code. So all said about the context or background of the Community Health Agent Program in Brazil. That is how I define this, not very good definition, but something. Basically, this is where you write the operational definition of the code. Two things now, two concepts that you have learned. One is the code and its comment, operational definition, and the quotation and its comment, a reflection on the content. You may have one single code attached to multiple quotations from multiple documents, but that code will always have one definition, which of course can be revisited. And each quotation will have its own reflection. Let me take a look at this. List of codes on the left side, drag and drop. Let's suppose this code applies to this segment. The definition of the code is the same, but the comment on the quotation, it is a unique reflection. Okay? All right. I am going to uh, delete that. Let's go on. I am going to show you now how to do this with a photograph. This is a photograph. You will select whatever segment you want to select and, uh, and uh, add a code and that code will be, uh, will be called vaccination. In the comment space of that quotation, that is a good place for you to describe the scene that you are seeing there. That is a health professional is administering an oral vaccine to a child, right? And then you say the child is held by an older child and so on. And in terms of the name, well, this is, this is a, 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 a administration of, of oral vaccine to child. Okay. So that is, that is how I, I, I name that particular quotation and the code is there and you have to define the code meaning, right? The code, well, the code. So you define the code. Let me go to another document. I, I told you already how to create, uh, how, how to code, right? With a new code, uh, a segment of, of the document. But what if uh, you, you select a segment and you don't really know what that means? All you know that is that it's interesting, but you don't know how to approach coding. So you, you don't want to rush into coding, but all you want to do is to create the quotation you want to go to the comment space of it, reflect upon it, but postpone the process of coding. If later on you say, okay, now I know how to code this after reading the entire interview or giving myself some time to think about it, well, you come back to it later on and you code it. In this case, I am going to use the same code vaccination because it's talking about immunizations, right? Uh, how do I do this? Uh, I can drag and drop from the left side as I did before, but I can also go to add coding on top and start typing. And, and the, 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 the codes uh, will start showing up. So I will select the one that I want. Uh, if, if that code does not exist, well, then it will not show up in the list. Add. So there you have it now, a text segment that was coded with that code vaccination. Let me go to a video uh, that I have. And in this video, 
uh, the 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 uh, uh, the health professional is showing where they keep the vaccines, and it's more or less around here. And, and you will notice there is a little orange icon on the right side, mark quotation start, and then the next one, create quotation. So I'm going to click on the first icon as soon as I am ready to start the selection. The health team, some of whom live in the slum as a condition of working here, shows us around. Start. End. So that is a, a, a video quotation. Perfect. And it has to do with vaccination. Therefore, I will drag uh, and drop from the left side or go to the top and select Add Coding. Uh, let me drag and drop. I drop it on top of the bar. So there you have it. That is uh, 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 the coding of a video document. Now I'm going to show you something that you will find interesting, uh, a geo document. You can navigate manually with the mouse to a specific location. You can write down a, a point of interest, for example, the name of a restaurant or a hotel or, or something or a hospital. Uh, or you can, uh, you can write down the specific address of that location or the geographic coordinates. I'm going to type Hospital da Lagoa, Rio de Janeiro. Okay, so this is a hospital in Rio de Janeiro. Enter. And now it's marked right there. That is the city. And now I will, I will zoom in. And I will zoom in as much as I want. And I think this is, this is, um, let me think if that is good enough. Yeah, that is good enough. Now that is good enough. So here we have uh, we have the hospital, and I see what is around it, right? Uh, I will now uh, drag and drop the code vaccination because of the fact that let's suppose that in that hospital they are conducting a vaccination campaign. Drop it. So there you have it. That became a uh, geographic quotation coded with the code vaccination. I will click on that quotation bar and in the comment of it, I will describe the location, what is around it. There is a hospital next to it, as well as, and I describe what, what is around that, that hospital. You know, so that, that could be very interesting, right? If you have an interview in which the person is describing a place, well, why not inserting into your analysis the mapping of that, right? The geographic location. Maybe when you look at that, at that map, you may end up having new insights, things that you did not consider before. Well, let's, let's give ourselves the opportunity for a new insight, right? The name of the quotation is the, ge is the ge geographic coordinates, but I will, I will rename that Hos hospital de Lagoa. So that is the name of, of the hospital. Satellite, hybrid, map. So there you have different ways of looking at the map. All right. The code vaccination for quotations. Double click one video. Two, a segment from an interview. Three, a, um, a, a segment or a, a section from a photograph. And fourth, the actual uh, location, geographic location. So you see, that is what I would refer to as perfect uh, triangulation. Uh, one concept across sources of information. Click on the last icon on the right, export in a spreadsheet table format or report. Let's experiment with report. What do we want this report to include? The name of the document from which those quotations linked to the code vaccination come, the codes that I applied to those quotations. Within coding, you have a number of options. You can play around with this as you practice and you will see what you will get as you select different options. 
the content of the quotations. Yes, of course, I want to see the content. What did people say? Uh, and also the, the comments that I wrote. If I wrote comments, they will be there. You see, and the report in Word would, will look exactly like what I am showing you here. Save, and there you have it. You have to make a little adjustment to the size of this screenshot here of this image. So it's too big. I need to make it smaller. So you, you will make it as small as you want, right? Uh, so that is the first one is a video quotation. Uh, the second one, and it's the first frame of that, of that video, of that video. Uh, the next one is a text from an interview. Uh, the following one is a segment from a photograph, remember? And the last one is the map. That is nice. There you have everything said about that particular topic in a Word document. Now that uh, that report can be made in, the, in from from other in, in other ways as well. So and this is where I am going to go into another project of mine that contains much more work, so that you can take a look at it. So here we are in this other project that contains much more work. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to show you what you can do with quotations. You know already that by going to or clicking on Command 1, you access the Document Manager. That is where you organize your documents. And if you click on Command 2, you will access the Quotation Manager, all of the quotations. Select one, you see below its content, on the right side its name, and the comment that you wrote on that quotation. If you did not write anything, well, this is the time to do it. Um, and further below, you see the codes linked to the quotations and information in terms of who created that and when. So who is the coder, which is very useful for teamwork, right? And on the left side, you see all of the codes that you have in your project. These codes have been named with prefixes in order to represent common categories and they have also been they have also been colored uh, and as you see that there are colored stripes next to the codes those are the colors that i gave to those codes if i select a set of those codes i see on the right side the quotations linked to them right then i go to that universal icon for outputs and i select the option a spreadsheet or report which is in word let me go to spreadsheet now and the spreadsheet uh, is here which in fact is nothing more than uh, as more or less you can think of it as a screenshot of the table that you see in atlas ti so the content of that table with each one of these columns uh, that is what will show in the spreadsheet so you are going to uh, keep the columns that you need, right? I would say that uh, uh, what is really useful when you're reading your quotations and you're sharing this with colleagues is to always include the number, the ID. The name is really optional. Let me, let me, um, let me hide that column. The content, of course, you need to have it. Do you want to know who said what? If you do, you keep the name of the document. Otherwise, you are going to hide it. Uh, the codes that were used, yes, I think that can be very useful. Uh, the number of codes, well, it could be, but let's keep them out this time. And the comment for sure. Now, I don't have too many comments here, uh, but, uh, but uh, this is, I think, something that can be useful. And the rest of the, of the, of the columns I will not uh, need, so I will get rid of them. Okay, so what I suggest to you is that you, you, you do this once in a while, you look at your, at your quotations, create these reports, and then you will, uh, you will read them and make sense of what you have learned. And uh, the next step I would suggest to you is that you go to uh, the main page of Atlas TI where it says where you have, where you have the plus sign, new memo, and here you will write a memo. So this memo is about funding. In the comment space of the memo, that is where you say, what is this about? Uh, I will write here 
about how the health centers are funded. And you are going to write this based on what you have read in this spreadsheet, in this report. I have placed the spreadsheet next to Atlas TI. Uh, if I want to have more space for writing, I hide uh, the navigator and I hide the inspector. I have enough space. Uh, Command D inserts the date and time and I start writing about what I have learned in relation to the funding processes. Right? And if you want to insert into your writing uh, individual quotations, Command C as one of the participants said command v and there you have a, a quotation added into your writing and uh, the id of that is always added in parentheses for two so a, a memo is the space in which you write your narratives explaining uh, 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 elaborating upon topics upon themes upon categ categories uh, upon concepts. Basically, this is where you integrate. This is where you bring it all together. And in this case, I am drawing for this writing on the reports of quotations, but I can also draw from what I thought about those quotations, which is represented in the comment column. Okay, now let's take a look at the list of codes. Uh, command 1 opens the document manager, command 2 opens the quotation manager, and command 3 opens the code manager. Here we have all of the codes of my project. As you have noticed, uh, they are all written with, well, not all, but many of them written with prefixes, which facilitates sorting them alphabetically. Now, I have shown you how to create codes as we are reading the text or looking at the photographs or watching the videos and so on. Uh, but I have not yet shown you how do you create a set of codes uh, beforehand. Let's call them a priori codes. So you bring these codes into the project uh, and, and, uh, uh, and you create them even before you start reading, because you know that these are things that you want to explore. So you do that by going to the code manager, command three, above, on the left, plus sign. And here is where you will, uh, you will write down the name of the, of the codes you want to create. Occupation, uh, and this is uh, forest services forestry forestry okay and with tab i will be able to go one by one and add new codes uh, there is also an option uh, to import from a spreadsheet uh, a, a, a table with codes with their colors and their definitions as well as uh, 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 the categories or groups to which they should belong so you can import that from a spreadsheet or you can create them one by one uh, like I did now, add, and these codes are now in the system. I, I click on the first one. If you want to color it, you will color it. Uh, command or comment, you will define the code, right? And then the other one is occupation, and you will define the code. And color it if you, if you want to do that. Uh, let me close that, that now, and I will come back to that in a few minutes. I will open uh, one of my interviews, and somewhere here, uh, these people are talking about occupation. They work in different occupations. You see, this quotation has already a code, but I am going to get rid of it so that uh, you are not uh, confused. I look at my list of codes on the left side and I look for occupation. Or I go to the top, add coding, and I start typing occupation. If 
I pick it up from the left side, I drag and drop it onto that selection. Otherwise, I click on Add. So that is how you use codes that you created beforehand. You see, that code occupation now has the number one next to it because there is one quotation connected to it. Before, it was zero. There was nothing. Let me give you a tip now. If you look on top, there are tabs. The first tab is what you see by default in the left side panel. The second tab, my documents, my quotations, my codes. So you can code from this list that only shows the codes rather than coding from the, uh, we call it the project explorer that contains everything. You see that? So there's more content here. You may want to work only from the list of codes if that facilitates things for you. But let me go back to the, to the code manager where I was before with command three. Uh, so I show you already how to create new codes and I told you, well, you can also uh, import, the, import your code list to, by going to, uh, to codes, import uh, from Excel, okay? All right, you can also group your codes together according to shared characteristics. So remember that we group together our documents according to shared characteristics. They could be demographic or non-demographic. You can do the same thing with codes, but here we are talking about the characteristics of the concepts, not of the sources of information. So you look at your code list and you start asking yourself, well, what are the characteristics, the commonalities among these codes? Uh, what categories can I construct from here? And you see that clearly there are a set of codes that have to do with a common topic, and that topic is funding. You select those codes, drag and drop into the left side, and with capital letters, I write funding. These 10 codes, they all have to do with that topic. Now, what do I get out of doing this organization? Uh, a couple of things. First of all, I can ask Atlas TI, as I will do in a few minutes, well, what did people say in regards to funding as a category? And that will retrieve quotations from each one of these codes. I can also ask the program what was said about matching funds in particular, right? Uh, so you can go from the particular to the specific to the uh, to to the category, a larger, a more abstract, or higher level of abstraction, I would say. So code groups can represent categories. They can represent themes, uh, emergent categories or themes. They can represent also uh, uh, constructs or, or categories that come from your research design or from the literature review or from the theory. But basically, it's a way of grouping together at a higher level of abstraction uh, your codes. Another application besides retrieving data is that by having these code groups, uh, you can also code uh, in that way. So you see in the Project Explorer, uh, the, first, uh, the first list, the one that is by default that uh, you always see there, you also see what it says there, code groups. Click there and now, and now I am reading a given document and I find something that has to do with, with funding. Let's say I select all of this. Well, then instead of looking at the entire list of codes, I simply look at my code groups and I go to that group that is about funding. I open that group up and I will select the code that I want to use, drag and drop. You see that? So you can code in a focused way by having code groups. All right, so let me now uh, uh, show you a few more things that uh, I think uh, you will like to see. Well, one of them has to do with visualizations. So. With Atlas TI, we have qualitative visualizations, that is, visualizations that show 
the the relationships, the connections between individual items of the project. Uh, that is, in opposition to quantitative visualizations that would show uh, numerical indicators or, or frequencies, for example. Well, in this case, we are focusing really on relationships. So let's take a look at some of these visualizations. I, I would like to start by saying that any individual item of the project can be visualized graphically. Any document, any document group, any quotation, any code, etc. So that you can see that item as part of a system. Let's start with documents. I will open one of my documents number, let me see, uh, number four, yeah, number four is okay. I will right click on it and select open in network. So this is the network of that document. Uh, and, and what does this network show me? It shows me the codes that have been used in that document. Now, from a research perspective, you could say that this is what this person is talking about. Funding origin, funding county level, history of community health centers, vaccination, LHC has decompressed hospital, occupation, LHC reaches out to more people. So these are codes used in this document. Now, let me compare that document, BR Urban Director of Health Center, with another one. And let's see, I drag and drop it into this network editor, and let's see what codes are shared. In other words, what are the topics that are shared by these two individuals? I am going to place these uh, nodes in a space in a way that is useful or in a, in a layout that is useful for me. And there you have it, right? Uh, the codes above, they are uh, codes that were used only in one document, in one interview, while the other two at the center are shared uh, with another individual. This network, Command-C, and in Word or PDF, Command-V, and there you have it. So you can be writing your report, inserting into your report uh, your networks, and explaining, right? Figure one, uh, this shows the following, right? This shows, in this case, uh, uh, topics in common between two of the participants. Uh, let me take a look uh, at one individual quotation. Right click on the quotation bar, open in network. This is the network of this particular quotation. I will show the inspector of, of that network. It, uh, it was hidden. I click on that quotation. It tells me that it's coded with one code, which is the one I have here. But if I click on this code, uh, I see that that code is connected, is linked to a set of, of four quotations. Let me bring one of them on board. Let me bring the other two on board. So where do we have? What do we have here? We have that uh, what uh, this participant number four said in relation to history of community health centers. Well, uh, other people also had something to say about that concept, history. Let me take a look at the previews of the quotations. And this is what they had to say. The video number five showed this. The interview uh, number seven said this. And the interview number six, or the interviewee number six, said the following, right? So there you have uh, something very interesting because it started with this quotation, right? In context, the quotation, you see it in its context, in the document, but you don't see really the connections between that quotation and other elements. That is what you see now. So you are moving from a limited contextual view of a specific quotation, you're moving from there towards 
more of a systemic view. And then you can say, and about quotation number 61, this other code was used there, right? And so on, and you keep on adding, adding, and adding as much as you want. So you can do this with, with documents, codes, quotations, etc. So I will leave this up to you then to start practicing and see what you get, okay? Uh, now, uh, this is something interesting that I would like to show you. Well, quotations can be connected to each other graphically. Well, semantically, sorry. <laughs> semantically, semantically. Uh, we call that hyperlinking. The first quotation, the text one, is, let's say, discussing what is shown in the video quotation. You see, discusses. These are, uh, these are uh, semantic linkages that I create between quotations uh, in order to represent how I think, oops, how I think that quotations relate to each other. Now, why can I make this connection? There you go. Let's suppose that the, the one I selected is contradicting this other one. So I am connecting quotations with quotations through semantic relations. They are meanings that uh, represent your understanding of how quotations link to each other, uh, relate to each other. Uh, the program provides you a set of those relations discusses, supports, contradicts, and so on, but you can create your own and you can customize them with different colors, different widths, and so on. So there's a lot of flexibility to represent your understanding uh, between uh, of the relationship between quotations. You can say the relationships between the pieces of the discourse. So we are going into, I think, discourse analysis. At the same time, you could say, and by the way, by the way, this code relates to that code because the first one is associated with the second one. So you can create uh, all kinds of, 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 of semantic linkages between codes as well, not only between quotations. And as you do that, you are drawing what I could refer to as a concept map. Uh, that represents your understanding of how codes relate to each other. Okay, so that is something that you can also do. Uh, let me go to my list of codes and I will say, funding sources is part of funding processes. I will say, foreign county church, state, drag and drop, they are funding sources, is a, they are. And now I will, I will visualize all of this graphically, oops, graphically, selecting those codes, right click, open in network, and there you have a nice tree. Right, a nice tree, uh, but the tree really is not perfect. Uh, the layout is not perfect. I have to play around with it, okay? So uh, processes is on top, on top, right? Uh, sources is below, and then we have uh, in foreign, foreign is a, is a funding source, church is one, count is another, and state is another. So there you have a tree, a tree of your codes. You may be wondering, may I code with, that, with this tree? May I code from a hierarchy? Yes, you may. Codes, funding processes, the one that is on top of the hierarchy, do you remember? Let me place this on the side so you can see this. Now, right click, code tree. Um, Pin. Now I open my interview and I can code from a tree. Select, drag and drop. Okay, yet another way of coding from a tree. You see that? 
So there are so many ways, there's so much space for, you know, for, for you to, to decide what approach is best for you. Let me show you now a few ways of, of interrogating the data. Under Analysis, we can select the Code Document table, which will allow us to, uh, to uh, look for code frequencies. So how much has been said about a given topic across participants. So let me select the Code Group Funding and compare that between two sides, Brazil and Guatemala. So there we have it. There have been four references to uh, the topic funding in the side Brazil and three in Guatemala. I click, click on one of those cells and I will see below the quotations linked to that, uh, to those codes in Brazil. Uh, and you can go to the uh, output option on the far right below and you can select one of the two output options as, as a table or as a narrative. And if you click on the universal output icon above, uh, the rectangle with an arrow pointing up, that will export this table in Excel so that you can work with it. Now, you can, you can, you can do other things with this. And, and very importantly, uh, and for that, let me add another document group. Uh, very importantly, you can ask another kind of question to the program by selected binarize uh, in the settings under count. And, and the question is this, uh, not anymore how much has been said about the topic, but whether or not something has been said, right? So I wonder if uh, people uh, or the documents in the report group of documents uh, if if there is any mention there to the topic funding and there is no mention but uh, among the people interviewed in Brazil and Guatemala there is at least one mention if you export this to Excel you will get a table with zeros for the absence of quotations and ones for the presence of quotations so this can be very useful right not how much has been said but rather whether or not something has been said so this is a code frequency count. Uh, another thing that you can ask Atlas TI has to do with associations of concepts uh, in the in people's discourses. Uh, we we refer to that as as code co-occurrences. So this is one of of two ways of examining that. Uh, well, I can tell Atlas TI Atlas TI. Why don't you give me uh, the number of of times? in which uh, people are talking about history, which is a code that I selected on top left, and a number of other codes which I selected below. And the program tells me that uh, there are two occasions in which people talked about history, and in the same context, in the same discourse, in the language of Atlas TI, somewhere in the same quotation, they talk about foreign funding you will select uh, or look at the quotations below and then you can go to the output on the far right and select your output options and if you want to create an output in excel of the table with the numbers you will do that by going to that um, rectangle with a point with an arrow pointing up that is the output option as you know all right uh, and another another uh, another way of querying the data uh, will be uh, asking questions such as this. Well, what have people said about a given topic, uh, but only those people who were interviewed in the site Brazil, for example, right? Or you may ask, what was said about topic X or topic Y and topic X on topic Y and so on. So you are combining codes with codes in multiple ways. Uh, there are different ways of doing this, but let me show you one. Command 2 opens the uh, quotation manager, and uh, you will see this filter icon on top right. Click there, and now Atlas TI will create a report um, uh, uh, based on a number of, of, let's say, rules that we specify, conditions that we specify. Plus sign will add the rule, the options are many. So I invite you to try this one by one and see what you get. But I will only show you one of these options. 
which is the typical one, is coded with either an individual code or the codes that belong to a group of codes funding, but this may not be enough because this gives me everything said by everybody about the topic funding. I don't want that. I want what was said by a specific subset of participants at the rule. And the rule will be is in document either one single document or the documents that belong to a group people interviewed in the site Brazil. And then you go to the output icon and produce the output. So this is uh, what you can do, but there are so many options that I cannot really describe in this webinar. Uh, I invite you to take a look at the quick tour manual uh, for, uh, for the specification of what each of one of these options mean. Okay. And you can try on your own and you will learn as well. So that's something I wanted to show you about querying the data. And finally, you can uh, look for keywords in context by clicking on the magnifying glass. Uh, give me everything said about health center uh, scope in documents. Double click, go to the document, the keyword in context and select documents in quotations shows me the quotations that include the specified words in codes nothing there's no codes whose names or comments include health center so you see this is a very very useful way for you to go to the places where the specified words are found and you will determine where you want to look for that Okay, so experiment with these different options and you will see what you get. So that, those are the, uh, the, the, the exploration and the interrogation tools that I wanted to show you. Well, this was all. Thank you very much. I hope this video was useful. Bye bye.